So if you're trying to think of a performance test, you can just do reaction times, add them up and, and look at uh, variability. But a much more, the problem is you, you get a reaction time every couple of seconds, you add it up, you're looking at 20 or 30 minutes of reaction times to get some kind of performance variability index. Uh, so we switched to eye movements. And so we're looking at circular smooth pursuit, which is just look at a, a dock going around a circle. It's continuous task, so I don't, it's not discontinuous. Continuous task. I see how well your eyes synchronize with a dock going around. I have cameras looking at your eyes. I can see how well you're looking at that dot and predicting where it's going to be. And indeed, we see in patients that have uh, recent traumatic brain injury or, or uh, persistent uh, traumatic brain injury, we're talking about concussion. So people have uh, either acute concussion or persistent concussion symptoms have variability. In other words, you see this kind of wobble of their eyes where they're really not predicting well. So it's like the ball's coming in there and their, their hand is swinging several times trying to figure out when the ball's going to come. So you see the same thing in eye movement, so it's sort of this wobble. And so uh, we formed a consortium back in 2002 uh, with UC San Francisco, Jeff Manley out there and Pratik Mukherjee, who's a neuroradiologist, Rich Ivory, and uh, people here at Cornell. And, um, we, the hypothesis was that people coming in with acute concussion would have timing problems and that it was as a result of shearing injury in their brain. And this would be picked up with diffusion tensor imaging. And uh, Pratik Mukherjee at UCSF is an expert in this, in this area. And so we did, acute, we did MRIs on these subjects and we did timing tests, cognitive tests, and then we followed them from the emergency room out to one month, three months, and that to one year. And there's a publication about to come out on this. And we published other articles uh, about uh, this group of patients, both acute and people with persistent concussive symptoms. And it looks like these subjects um, that the frontal white matter tracts that are involved in attention are the most vulnerable tracts that we see in mild traumatic brain injury. And the reason for that is probably because they're up front. And when you have a concussion, the head moves around. The problem, by the way, is not the focal impact of the head, it's the neck. The neck is moving <laughs> and you get this rapid whiplash of the brain and because the frontal lobes are, are so far away from the back of the head or where the neck is, they, they get subject to the most shearing force. And so this, these areas in the front part are the most vulnerable and that's where we see uh, on diffusion tensor imaging, that's where we see these kind of shear injuries. And this makes perfect sense when you, because you're, when you're paying attention, this is where the attention circuit is. It's the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex connected to the parietal lobe and also the cerebellum. These circuits are involved in, in, in uh, paying attention. And when you get this sort of rapid whiplash, you can shear these, these tracks and get this attention problems, which is what you see in concussion. So we're trying to build a scientific foundation for what is really happening in concussion and what are the, uh, what kind of symptoms and cognitive deficits these patients have as a result of these injuries.